Welcome to my garage. Today I'm going to be talking about A-Arms, specifically that they are not two force members, despite what I was told by some people during my time in college, uh, especially at FSA events and reading through FSA forums and other ways uh, of discussion there. So, of course, it, a two force member is something that only has two, uh, two forces acting through it. And then if you read about them, it'll say it has a hinge or a pin on each end, which if we look at this pull rod, it has a spherical here, a spherical down at the end. You can see it can has all these degrees of freedom. Of course, it's restrained uh, along its axis, so I can't push it or pull it very easily without compressing the spring. So all the forces are going to be going through that. Same, I mean, that's just how a spherical works. It allows rotation. It can't transmit any torque through it, so no moments, which I believe is also a requirement to be a two force member. Only forces, no moments. If you look at this tie rod, same thing, it can rotate it. Of course, it can rotate as you steer it, and it only has a uh, compression or tension force acting through it. Then look at the A arm. So we have that same spherical at each end. So it can move up and down, right? But I cannot move it forward and aft, like braking or drive forces. Only up and down it has some degrees of freedom. But it has pins, or you can call let's, let's call sphericals today just to make it easy uh, a hinge. It has hinges on each end, so why is it not a two-force member? Because it's welded. So when you're welding it, it's not the force is not applied by the hinge. There's a force that can be coming through the welded section here. What I have here is like a simple A-arm. has bolted connections down at the end and those are going to act as a hinge as I'm pulling we'll call this the X axis it's allowed to freely pivot around the X axis where I have a ratchet strap from that end to the table and this plate that the <clears throat> A arms bolted to is welded to the table this is going to simulate force under braking if we check with this straight edge, this arm's pretty straight. So it has a slight bend in it already, but for this, that should be fine. But just to see a starting point of uh, where this is, You see a little gap here, so it's somewhere in the middle, it's rocking. So again, you see really big curvature here. And also this curvature in this front arm, or yeah, I guess you call that the front if this is braking load. Take the load off. So some of this bending in this tube, it could be buckling because I mean, it's a slender rod. And you think the force pulling on this, this is under compression. You'd think this would be mostly under tension, but we saw bending in it. And that's because here, this plate, it's not only very poorly welded here, but it's welded this plate on kind of like a lot of A-arm designs have. So tying those together makes these not two force members, which allows bending in what you would think would be just a rod under tension if it was a two force member. But in fact, even that one has bending in it. 
So on that last test, I figured some people might think it was the buckling of the front arm that was causing all of the, I mean, the buckling is kind of bending and that's what's, what's causing all the bending. It's not actually in bending if it didn't buckle, but to kind of show that it is, I made this sleeve that's kind of tight fitting. So the tubes slip inside of it. And what basically this is doing is gonna allow a simulation of compression without actually having the compression load so it won't go into buckling. But allow it to at least deform exaggerated amount in compression. And then we'll see what happens then. We can check here. It's straight. So now we simulate all this compression. So the fact that it's springing back is already telling you something. And we see here, this tube is bowed. So the tube that should be under tension is bowed. So here we can see what's happening on this tube that's in simulated compression. Watching the gap here. Where it, the gap at the tip here grew, saying that this arm's kind of in a, a U shape. And kind of Y. We do this compression. Move the camera. See, for these to be in line, well, they can never be in a line. But that's kind of why it's curved that way. Just of how going from straight to that. So to stay, you know, if these are actually connected, it'd be a U-shape, as it, we kind of saw here. So, I mean, this kind of also shows that this can never be in line, it can never be a two-force member, because of all this is welded. It's again showing that it's straight. I just hold it there. We can really even more bending. So that's going to happen with no matter how little uh, actual compression deformation there is in this tube. I mean, it's just the more that it deflects, the more it's going to actually bend and bow, but um, it's just an exaggeration here to show you what happens, even though in reality it might be a, a much smaller amount, but it's still in bending. All right, so as we just saw, A-arms are not two force members. There is bending that are in them. So if you're going to use rod ends on the inboard side, there is bending in it. Not as much as the outside, but there is still some in there, which you need to take account for. How much? It's going to depend on size of your A-arms, how much force is going through your tire, um, diameter of your tube. Bigger tube is going to be stiffer. It should have less bending, but there's still going to be shear along the uh, roots of those threads of a rod end. And also, if you're going to do calculations as if a-arms are two force members. I would take one, do a calculation, and maybe do FEA of the same A-arm design and compare the two through hand calculations. What's the max load you should see and compare it to your FEA. What, from my experience, from when I looked at A-arms in FEA, when they're pretty much equal length, where the A-arm's like a true A, where front and rear are the same if we're really close in length, there's not as much bending as if 
You've seen some A-arms that are really swept back. I've had looked at a design like this where the tube that was really swept back had a lot of bending in it. So something to look at. Do your calculations. Realize if you are going to do treat them as two force members because it's simple that it is wrong but at least do one FEA to see how much difference there is between treating it as basically a solid object welded here to a two force two two force members so compare them see if they're close or if they're really far off then maybe you want to go with FEA and FEA if it, a arm it's pretty simple shouldn't take too long so that's how I would justify doing FEA of a arms some people think it's a waste of time but it's really quick to do anyway so depends on what you can justify how much time you have and how accurate you think your calculations are so just be cautious of whatever calculations you use and what the actual reality is. Cause as we all know, every model is wrong.